everybody. Welcome back. Live at Drew's house, another edition. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, this actually has the distinction of being our very last show of the year. So I always try to finish with one of our favorite guests, a uh, return guest in this regard, uh, formerly of Channel 5, the great Mike Lynch joins us. Hello, Mike. How are you? Hey, Drew. Hi, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. I did my best. We haven't done a show from Live at Drew's house in a while from my actual house. So, so I tried to put up some Christmas decorations and, you know, whatever. <laughs> you, outdid, you outdid yourself. I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> well, very good. First of all, uh, I got to ask you right off the bat, how you feeling? A little bit of a rough year for you. Yeah, it was kind of tough. I had a stroke on May 17th. I spent 100 days in uh, Spalding Rehab Hospital in uh, Charlestown. Um, I get out like uh, Labor Day weekend, and I've been going to out, um, outpatient therapy about three days a week. Um, my my right side, I still don't have any it's the side that was affected, but you know, I'm, I'm getting there. Here it is right here. Here's the right hand. Um, I could stand up if I wanted to. Uh, so I'm getting better every single day. And that's that that's the uh, that's the best part of it. Yeah, you look great. I've been following you on the podcast you do with your friends, Bob Bell and Butch Stearns and those guys. Yeah. You guys all seem yeah. to be having fun as ever. So <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. What's the uh, so I mean, it was I know it, it kind of hit me. I, kn- I remember reaching out to you right after it happened because I it just kind of it came out of nowhere for me. Uh, just uh, uh, talk, talk about just the process. Scary time or. Yeah, it was. Well, I, I was uh, going to I was watching a Celtics game. I was uh, tip off was like 840 that night. So about yeah. 830, I was just I just felt like I've been sitting on the couch too many nights. And I hadn't done the exercise. So I said, I'm going to go for a quick walk around the block. So I went for a walk around the block and and. Um, you know, I, my wife went the opposite way because she said, what's he doing taking a walk? And I was, I was coming up a very, very, very gentle incline, but I was out of breath. You know, that's, that's not like me. I'm going, uh, and boom, I went face first, fortunately down into a pile of grass. I missed the, uh, the gutter and the, and the sidewalk. And, um, um, you know, my, my wife and my daughter took me right into Mass General and they had me at Mass General for five days and then they moved me over to Spalding for the other 95 days. And um, yeah, it was scary. It was a, a massive stroke, uh, what's called a hemorrhagic stroke, um, which means you have a little bleeding on the brain. And um, so I got my speech back and my memory back really fast, which is key because sometimes you don't get that back. Um, I, I got discharged on Labor Day weekend in a wheelchair. I've since moved into a, a walker. I now at, at therapy, I walk around with, without anything at all. Um, so you know, the right hand is, is uh, still, I mean, I don't think I could throw 95 with it right now, but uh, uh, I can pick things up, I can put things down. And uh, I, learned, I learned how to do a lot of things with my left hand. My dad was my, my football, basketball, and baseball coach. He always said, Michael, you learn how to lose, use your left hand. You're gonna need it someday. <laughs> he was talking about basketball, you know, to beat an opponent. But now I said, dad, you were right. I, I was gonna need it someday. So I've become a lefty, but pretty soon I'll be, I'll be back to back to normal. It's just going to take a little bit of time. I got to be patient, and then I got nothing else but patience right now. Here, I'll digress for a second because that's a funny story. I still have a memory of fifth grade basketball. I won't say the coach's name because little does he know he haunted me the rest of my life. But I, in a blowout game, we had just worked on lefty layups and using the left hand in practice. And I went in on a breakaway, and I heard him as I was a couple feet away from the basket yell, "Left hand." And I, of course, went up and laid it in with my right hand. He called the timeout, pulled me out of the game, and screamed at me. Really? I'll never forget it. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It wasn't good. Coaches, yeah. well, leave impressions on kids. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I did learn a left hand, though. It was good. Later in life, he was officiating a, a game as I got older. And uh, I'm sure he didn't remember it. But later in life, I made a nice little lefty hook shot at, in a game and that he was refing. And really? he, I heard him say during the game, he goes, ooh, pretty left. I go, you've <laughs> I said, you've always loved the left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man, well, that's good. But uh, so I see you're, you're coming back. I mean, it must be um, you must have had a relief when those things, you know, the memory was there. Yeah. You, you started you realized, OK, I can start to teach myself back here a little bit. That must be a huge relief. Yeah, because um. Um, at Spalding Rehab, each, each floor, like one floor is for amputees, one floor is for uh, stroke victims, and I was on the fourth floor, which is for stroke victims. And um, all of us have different levels of, of strokes. You know, at, at the first couple of weeks, I'd say, geez, that guy's only been here like a week. He just got discharged. I'm not, I'm not getting discharged. They go and, and they explain to me every, every case is different. And um, so I, I have to retrain my, my right side, my right hand, my right leg. Um, uh, I got to 
I, I got to tell them what to do. So it, it's, it's really incredible. Like visually, I have to look at this hand. If I'm picking up a cup, like my, my, my phone right now, I pick it up, I look at it, and I put it down, and it goes down, and I, then I release it, and I put it back. If I just you know, going to put it down or something like this, I, I drop it on the floor. Mm. So since you don't have the sensory touch of knowing that you've got something, you need the visual connection. So I mean, pretty soon, you know, the, the sensory part will come back. And uh, it's just taken, I, you got to have patience and, um, and, and, and you, you really have to have patience. And something tells me, I know, you know, you and I have both worked in newsrooms our whole lives. Yeah. We're, we're, we're used to multitasking and doing yeah. a million different things at once. Uh, yeah. I'm sure that doesn't come particularly easy to you. Yeah, well, I mean, in, you know, in the news business, there, the patience is, uh, doesn't <laughs> exist because every, everybody wants something five minutes ago or an hour ago, do more with less, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I've been used to it. And uh I'm good. I'm good. I'm good mentally and uh, I'm good for getting better physically. And I, I feel bad. I have to rely on so many people for rides and, you know, things like that. I, you know, can't, can't do myself, but you know, I, I shave, I, I, I take a shower, um, now I eat, I cut my, cut my, my meat by myself. And so, you know, I've come a long way where people had to do all this stuff for me, uh, you know, a month or two months ago. That's good. To, it's great to hear that. I mean, I, I honestly, we had to talk, I think we talked on the phone a month or two ago, or at least texted, yeah. I think, and uh, when I first reached out, you kind of gave me an idea how bad it was. And just, I had seen you back doing the podcast and everything. I was like, oh, he seems his normal self. So uh, <laughs> I think some people didn't even realize how bad of a situation it was, but it's great to, great to see you uh, yeah. coming back like this. We missed you. I will tell you, I didn't exactly know where you were at. So I, uh, this was one of the few years I didn't have you on for our Thanksgiving uh, right. little tune up yeah. there. So we, we certainly missed that here in Newburyport, but uh, what was, what was Thanksgiving? Did you get to see any, how did it go for you? I, don't I, actually, know. Went, I actually went to a game. I went down to, I live in Winchester. I went down to the Winchester Woburn game and um, <clears throat> they, I sat on a, on a wall in the end zone and it was a beautiful sunny day. It was cold. It was probably, you know, 40 degrees, but, uh, and I, I loved it. And the week before that, I went to the uh, Harvard Yale game. Um, and the week before that, I went to the Andover Exeter game. So, um, you know, I got around, I got out, um, people were great. They, uh, they, they, uh, you know, let me park and, you know, right close to the stadiums. And, uh, you know, you get, you get a little bit of sympathy when you're walking around with a walker, you know, so, so I'm milking that right now. <laughs> you kidding me? You were like the, uh, people used to love seeing you show up at that game. You were like the best thing that could have happened to a high school football game. <laughs> Uh, actually is that still that i mean i can imagine when you I, I bet for a split second people forget that you know you're not covering it like you used to in the in the heyday but when you show up at those high school games people still must be like finally we got lynchy at a game <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a big deal i'm used to walking into a, a red Sox locker room or a celtics locker room where the players are running away from you the other way yeah. and every time i showed up like at danvers where you went the Everest high school and people would that were, were great they say hey lynchy's here hey mike what can we do for you <laughs> That is too funny. Uh, again, Mike Lynch joining us. And actually, just one quick thing. I know you always got your way to give a shout out, but uh, if something is bad, if something bad is going to happen to you health wise, Boston is the place to have it happen. And, uh, and I know you've been giving all sorts of praise for the doctors and nurses. Well, your dog, your dog agrees with you, obviously. He's giving yeah. me. Yeah, he's happy to hear you're doing OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Boston's a place to be. I mean, and uh, I had people in my on my floor that were in, from California. I had one guy from Alabama. <laughs> Else hang on one sec Mike hang on one second I'll just All let right. him out just because uh it's been a little while since we've done this <laughs> hang on one second. go ahead do what you gotta do all right I do not miss that about the zoom days the dog's interrupting <laughs> <laughs> it's good though um, it's, it's life it's real life it is real life but uh yeah so sorry you were saying that we're not leaving. Um, what was I saying <laughs> oh the doctors in uh the medical staff yeah the medical yeah as I said I, I I've had you know people on my floor in some of my classes when I was there, they were from Alabama, from Florida, from Texas, from California, coming all from around around the country and around the globe that want to come to Spalding. So I'm lucky it was a 15 minute ride for me and some people traveling, you know, half to halfway across the country. Yeah, Chris, and it must be, I mean, I know everybody says this, but I, it, I could just see just from social media and everything, the amount of people that reached out to you, just, yeah. you know, just ho hoping they could get a word, just hoping you were all right. I mean, that must be, that never gets old, right? He's having people that care about you. It's amazing. I, I never knew that many people really liked me or cared about me. <laughs> <laughs> and I try to respond, you know, I'm left-handed, so I try to respond or just put a like on, uh, on if they made a nice comment. Uh, there were some people in the, 
in the Boston market, uh, the governor, Charlie Baker, I used to live on my street in Swampscott. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he remembers that. And uh, he was very nice. And some other professional athletes uh, were really, it really meant a lot. Um, you know, Coach Jerry York at uh, BC came over the house one day. He brought like a, like a big tin of uh, pistachios, cashews, almonds. They're delicious. You know, I'm still, I'm still eating by the fistful of my left hand. <laughs> but, uh, it, it's really you really you find out about people people that won't call up they want to give you a ride to therapy they want to uh you know uh see anything they can do just come over and talk for 15 minutes and uh so that that, that that's been really great i haven't have not had to go at this alone that's great jerry york is he's the real deal isn't he I, oh my gosh yeah. oh he is he's just so un, he's just he, he's the real deal i mean he's just so sincere and he, he was checking in with me, thinking, how's everything going? And, you know, oh, you must be all pumped up for the Harvard deal game. And he goes, I want to come over to the house. Uh, I'm coming over Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I'll come over Tuesday. He comes over at noontime, takes his coat off, sits the, at the kitchen counter. And, uh, you know, uh, we just had a great time. And I got a nice tin of, uh, of uh, cashews and pistachios and everything else. Ah, that means that means a lot. That's great. And, of course, Governor Baker has now decided he's jumping into the sports world. I'm sure you followed that. I know, and I, I, I congratulated him. I said, hope you don't have to leave Swamp Scott. And he said, Swamp Scott rocks, you know, and, and um, he's probably going to have to because the headquarters are in Indianapolis, but he's always a wonderful guy. Um, he used to uh, live on our street. He and my dad uh, were great friends. They went to a lot of games together because my, my, my father's grandsons and Charlie's sons were teammates and friends. And uh, when my dad, uh, my dad had a great life. He died when he was 91 or 92, I think. And, um, Charlie Baker called me the next day and he said, Mike, Charlie Baker, can, can you talk for a couple of minutes? I said, sure. He said, uh, well, geez, I'm really sorry about your dad. We sat at more games. I thought I knew everything about sports, you know, and I'm sitting with your dad. Your dad goes, you know, if they don't get this number 32 in the backfield, they're in for a long day. He's just going to, he, he's a great defensive player. Watch him. And not at all, he was right. He says, I'm really sorry you lost your dad, but there's one thing that pisses me off and will piss me off for eternity. Swapscott had their first annual first ever town spelling bee. And the two finalists were Dick Lynch and Charlie Baker. And he not only beat me, he kicked my butt. And there's nothing, nothing worse than getting beat by a guy from BU if you're a Harvard guy. So <laughs> it was great. It was a, it was a great line. And uh, it was, uh, he's, he's been a good friend, good friend of the family. Yeah, so that probably did. For a lot of people, I think, I mean, you knew he had a little bit of the basketball background, but I think yeah. a lot of people didn't, it kind of came out of the blue. That did, probably didn't surprise you as much. No, no, not at all. Um, uh, I, I knew he was he was up to something. My mother was my mother takes a walk by his by his house all the time because she loves to see who the protesters are, you know. And yeah. so she comes back. She goes, I knew something was up because they just painted their house a couple of weeks ago, and I knew something was up. So it's good job, mom. Get the scoop. <laughs> yeah, so he's going to have to move. That's interesting. I forgot they're in Indianapolis. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's the NCAA. That's the president of the NCAA. A lot of people wanted them to run for a different kind of president. But yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> But, you know, that, 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 I mean, that, that organization needs a lot of cleaning up and he's got a great track record of cleaning things up and, and making things right. And um, I have every confidence that it, it'll take, a, take some time, but you know, I would say within, within four years or so, he'll, um, he'll have that NCAA on its feet and uh, they'll be a respected organization. You're true. You're right though. It's a tough job. I mean, college sports is so yeah. much different than it was even five years ago. Never mind yeah. 10 years ago. You're talking about the, you know, the money that's coming in, kids can accept with certain rules. And now, you know, sports gambling is becoming a different thing in all these States. So it's yeah. a different job. Yeah. Much, much different. There's name image and likeness now guys, can, you know, some guys are making a million dollars. Some guys are making $20. Um, uh, sports betting, um, you know, protecting athletes from being uh, to, being tempted by somebody who, uh, who uh, you know, hey, Rocco, you know, is going to give me uh, 10 grand if I, if I throw this game. And, um, you know, it, it, it's a big job. And the NCAA has sort of just hasn't had it. It lost its compass, I think. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it just didn't have any, any identity. It didn't have any force. It didn't have any, um, any might. And I think Charlie's going to bring all that back. You know, you, you mentioned the, uh, you know, the, the college sports. And one thing that I was thinking about you on Thanksgiving and, you know, as we didn't have you on the show this time around and, uh, but I was thinking about you because there was one line that you said that I had never thought about. And it was weird that I had never thought about it because it's such a simple thing, but you were talking about how all those kids that take the field that will be the last game they ever play. 
and that stuff's not an issue anymore. It's the last time they play for their town. Or how do you phrase it? It's the, you have a better way of phrasing it, but it's the last time. It's, so it's, it's the last time that, that, that they'll, they'll play where the whole town is involved. It's a, it's a participant uh, thing on, on Thanksgiving morning. College, you choose the school. And then if you're yeah. lucky enough to go somewhere else, you're, you're, you're pulled somewhere else for financial reasons. But high school, it's all about that community. And yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's always, I always think about you with, uh, on Thanksgiving football, I guess. So that we'll make, can we book that already for next year, by the way? Can we make I'm sure? In. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, how has the, uh, how have the holidays been? I know, obviously, it's uh, probably a whole different, you'll never forget this holiday for different reasons because you're yeah. trying to make a comeback here. But uh, how they've been so far? It's good. My Christmas shopping uh, has had a little crimp in it. I haven't been able to sneak out and, you know, buy something. Uh, you know, I went to, to Walgreens today with my wife. I go, well, you can't come in here. You know, I was going to buy some stocking stuffers. I buy, usually buy the same stuff every year. She goes, all right, I'll get down to the bank. And uh, how long are you going to be? I said, oh, maybe, maybe 10 minutes or so. And now I got a little bag. And like I said, don't look in the bag now. She said, I don't want to look in the bag. <laughs> so you know i kind of i'm dependent on people to, to, to her mostly but to, but transportation and for other things you're not missing much i was at the mall yesterday it was a mob scene <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one thing i don't miss is looking for a parking spot at the mall true yeah yeah my see i barely i go to i went and met a friend for a drink and he kind of had some shopping to do that was my version of shopping i <laughs> i got out of there kind of quickly uh it's funny again mike lynch joining us uh, as we wind down the final show of the year for us here, we're doing it live from uh, Drew's house, the, uh, the the kitchen version here. It's been a little while since we've done that. So it's uh, it kind of brings back. So what do you, I mean, I guess when you I'm kind of having some memories thinking back here as I look at this backdrop. I mean, this, the last three years, man, have been, they've been wild. I don't, I, yeah. I, I'm going to look back in 10 years and still, I think, try to be sorting out what the hell happened in these three years. <laughs> You know, I was thinking that today we were, I was, uh, when I was in, in Walgreens, everybody was six feet apart. I said, are we going back to this thing now where people mm -hmm. wearing masks and, and people are still getting COVID. I mean, a lot of people are getting it. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, I, I think the severity of the COVID is, is improved with all the inoculations that we have, if you choose to have them, but um, this thing is still around. Yeah. And, you know, it's still going it, it, to, I think it's going to impact a lot of traveling. It's going to impact the, uh, uh, the number of people that come to people's houses and people, you know, that come down with stuff like between now and Saturday, aren't going to be able to go anyplace. They're going to have to just, uh, you know, stay by themselves. Yeah, it should be, it'd be an interesting winter to see how that goes. You're right. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot more masks and all that. Uh, let's talk about something. I want to say more lighthearted. Uh, yeah. Depends how big of a Patriots fan you are. But uh, <laughs> man, what? I mean, these guys are, I honest, it's going to be tough for them to make the playoffs, but uh I, what do you make of this year right now? I'm very surprised that they are unprepared for so many games. That's um, crazy. And that's always been the trademark of a Belichick team. They out-prepare everybody. I mean, everybody. And we used to laugh at the other teams. We'd say, you know, just sit there and just, just wait for them to make a mistake. Wait for them to make the mistake. And now the Patriots are one of those teams. Um I, I, I'm very disappointed in Mac Jones. Um, he clearly, clearly does not like having Matt Patricia calling the plays. Yeah. And his body language and his gyrations on the field aren't helpful to the team. He's really got to grow up in terms of that. He's got to just, you know, get into get get under the, the, the stadium and have it out with Patricia and, you know, do whatever your body language tells you to do. Yeah. But he's... He's different, and and I'm not sure he's the guy to lead this team right now. Yeah, I mean, you've seen, you. I mean, I'm sure you've seen stories that you probably didn't even report on because you were, maybe you weren't supposed to be there or whatever, but I mean, you, I'm sure you've seen guys behind the scenes have battles with coaches, yeah. but yeah. stuff that they all protect each other when it comes to meeting the reporters and stuff. I mean, I know yeah. you've seen that stuff. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I've, I've seen guys you know, underneath the stands. I used to do the Patriots show. So, you know, during the week, I'd be, I'd be, you know, going by the locker room, going by the meeting rooms, et cetera. And I saw a lot of things. But, you know, I knew that I wasn't supposed to say anything about those things because I was just have to happen to be walking down down a hallway. But um, I, I, I think that that Bill Belichick probably would like to have a do over or a mulligan and naming Matt Patricia, the offensive coordinator. He's a defensive guy. Yeah. And I don't know. I just. I think Mac Jones has a better idea how the offense should run than Matt Patricia. And I think that's one of, one of, one of Mac Jones's uh, big frustrations right now is that he's more of an offensive guy than, than Patricia is. So um, 
it, it, it's, it, it, I, you know, there's three games left. I don't know if much is going to change, but a lot has to change before they come back next year. You, uh, you have that unique chance to sit down all those years with Belichick. So you got to know him a little bit better than most people. What is a year like, what is, even the last two years, you know, just not quite the level, not quite firing on all cylinders. What does this do to him? Does he like the process of it, of, of rebuilding? Or I, I've always thought he must be that kind of guy too, a little bit. No, we, we really don't know the answer to it because we really haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, they, uh, the year that, that uh, Bell, uh, Brady went down um, to Kansas City in, in the first game, um, and he had to uh, bring in uh, Matt Castle. He actually relished that year because, um, you know, it was, okay, let's see how well Bill does without Tom Brady. And he went 11 and five. Right. It was a pretty good year that year. Going yeah. with, uh, and so I, I think he was pretty, pretty content. I remember um, they needed, uh, I, I remember that because I was in it, Maine and I remember they, they, pro they had a great chance to get in. They needed like a heavily favored Green Bay to yes. win. Their yeah. game four o'clock, and yeah. the Green Bay got smoked for some reason. I'm yeah, not, and they, yeah, they didn't make the playoffs, but yeah. it was a pretty good coaching job, you know, at eleven and five without without Tom Brady. Yeah, um, but right now he's got. I mean, that play the other day, the where, Raiders game. Yeah. Oh my gosh, where you know, <laughs> the lateral? I got to think that those two guys forgot the score was tied. I thought the same thing. They, they just they just lost they saw the first when Ramondi Stevenson flipped the ball back to Myers. Myers said, Oh crap, we're down. Yeah, we can't get out with the football. Let's let's just just keep throwing. Do not get tackled with the football. Yeah. And um I, I mean I've never seen that. I, I usually see that in a, in a touch football game you have with your buddies, and it winds up being intercepted like like that one was and, and running for a touchdown, or it winds up being a fumble. This was one of the most bizarre things. I saw Jim Marshall of the Minnesota Vikings back, I think it was in the 60s or early 70s. He picked up a fumble and he ran 98 yards for a touchdown the wrong way into the other team's end zone. <laughs> and that, other than, than that, I think that's one of the craziest, and I don't want to say dumb thing because it's really an insult to the players' intelligence. And these guys have pretty high football IQs, but they just, they lost it. It happened in a, an NCAA Final Four game. Remember the guy passed the ball to, yeah. uh, I think Michael Jordan was playing. North Carolina was playing Georgetown. And yeah. then also happened, uh, they somebody, somebody called a timeout for Michigan. Chris Weber. Time outs left. That was Chris uh, Weber who ended up being okay. That was a yeah, good. Yeah, and it was a technical foul that called. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that, it happens, but it never happens. With, I've never seen it happen with a Belichick team. They I, have so prepared. I will say, good job by Jacoby Myers after the game. He unbelievable. Uh, that was admirable. That was that was terrific. He just stood up and said, "Nope, on me. Nope, I tried to do too much. I'm my fault. My fault." He, and he was he was right. You know, I, I'm sorry goes a long way in anything, and and especially with football. Oh well, well, geez, well, someone told me the lateral. That, uh, no, no, we were trying to win the game. We didn't want to go to overtime. You know, he he didn't give me any of that crap. Yeah. Um, Bill, on the other hand, you know, came in and said. You know, why didn't you try a Hail Mary? He said, well, we couldn't throw the, throw the ball that far. And Mac Jones said, I can throw the ball that far. I, I can, you know, 55 yards is nothing for somebody like me. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. I, I don't think it's just us who've been through it in the, in the business, but I think just even watching that on TV, people admire a guy who stands up there and takes the yeah. questions after probably one Absolutely. of the one of the downer moments of life, I would say. You know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, who is going to remember that for a long, long time? Yeah, uh, which was really too bad because I don't even know why they ran a play. I don't know why don't they just take a knee and just you know, go for the coin toss and hand over time. Or let's we could talk in that same game. We could talk about the getting down to the one yard line and then throwing throwing three low percentage passes. <laughs> awful, awful. And then they score a touchdown and Bill Bill came running down the side and called a timeout, so they took seven points off the board there. Nothing. Uh, the, other, the other thing too was crazy was was the punt. I mean, two or three of those guys weren't even ready. They were turning around looking at the punter. When the ball was snapped, bizarre. Yeah. Oh, it was awful. You know, and, and, and one of those uh, uh, Smith there, uh, uh, one of the tight ends, he wasn't even ready. He was looking at somebody out there when Mac Jones snapped the ball. You know, <laughs> I know it's so oh. unpatriot like, so unbelichick like that. I'm just stunned that it's happening. It is. Uh, things are better at the Garden. Winter sports teams doing all right. Yeah, yeah, they're doing great. Um, uh, the only the problem is it's too bad it's December and it's not True. May. You know. Um, Remember last year at uh, this time, or about maybe three weeks later, the Celtics uh, had a losing record. They were uh, they were like the laughing stock of the league, 
and they wound up going to the NBA Finals. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, the reverse could happen this year, but I don't think so. Both those clubs are just really, really good. Now the key is you know, stay healthy. Stay healthy and, and, and stay alive and uh, make some noise in the playoffs. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm wondering, because you got a chance to cover him a while. He's been around for, for uh, geez, for, I forget what year he came up. But I'm going to ask you about one of my favorite Boston athletes of all time, Patrice Bergeron, coming back oh. here for this run. Uh, what, did you have some uh, good back and forth with him over time? Or You know, um, I remember one Sunday night they played the Carolina Hurricanes, and it was game seven. Uh, might have been the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm not sure. But the Bruins lost in overtime. So on Sunday night, we have the half-hour show, so the interviews go a little bit longer. So I went in there with my cameraman, and we waited for all the, you know, everyone sort of cleared away from Bergeron, and we did like a four-minute interview with him. Season's over, blah, 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 da, 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 da. I get out in the hallway, and Mike Cole, our cameraman, who's the best in the business, he's going, I got some RF interference. That means radio frequency. So that means the interview, you can't, it, it, it's unusable, you know, it, it's unusable. I said, sugar, what are we going to do? And so I went back in the locker room. Bergeron was just finishing getting dressed. And I said, geez, Patrice, uh, I'm really sorry to do this, but uh, we had technical difficulties with the thing. Do you mind doing that new interview again? He said, sure, no problem. And just stood there and did the same thing for four minutes again. I mean, how many guys would do something like that? That might not seem like a lot to people listening, but man, that is something. That's after big. That, after that that's, kind of loss. That's big. And you, you know you're going home with nothing. Right. After after you have the technical problem, no fault of anybody's. It was just that somebody next to him was on different same frequency. And um, um, now I get I got the interview with Bergeron and I, I just never I never forgot that. I never forgot that. Yeah. There's a million stories like that about him, too. It's it's funny. Everybody I talked to who's like got to cover that guy or they they have something and just something behind the scenes that he did for somebody or whatever. Just, you know. That's the stuff people remember, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll never forget it. He's still playing. And, you know, every time I see him, and he probably doesn't even remember it. But that's, that's what – I mean, hockey guys are different. They're different. They're, they're, they're right here. And then they're in first place. There's nobody in second place. There's a third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth place. Because they <laughs> just, was, they're so good. That was your experience, yeah? Yeah, yeah, without question. Without question. And, you know, they wind up going to Boston to Children's Hospital. They wind up going to the Shriners uh, Hospital. They go to the uh, Franciscan Children's Hospital. And they there's never a press release, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, there are some people like, okay, uh, so-and-so is going to be at Children's Hospital at 2 o'clock today for a photo opportunity. And, you know, hey, how you doing? And these guys just do it on their own. And they're 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 incredible. I mean, the hockey, the hockey people are just so different than everybody else. Oh, that's great to hear. And I, I don't even know if I have the stomach right now to talk about the Boston Red Sox. I, I, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I just, if, uh, my dog is named, the dog you hear barking in the background. He's outside. It was, is Mookie. <laughs> I, I named the, the dog Mookie after my favorite player. He's gone. <laughs> and now they've traded my other favorite player, Xander Bogarts. I just, these are it, for a guy. I'm a baseball guy. I've loved it my whole life. I, and I, you know, I understand it's a business. I'm an adult, you know, I don't have to, have the allegiances like I, I did when I was a kid, but like it does, it's hard to root for a team when they're trading away these guys that are parts of the community, you know? It really is. I mean, you just think a, a, short, a short time ago, the best outfield in baseball, the killer bees, Ben and Tendy with a B, Bradley with a B, Betts with a B, Bogos was a shortstop, you know? I mean, you had a great, great team. They won the World Series and uh, beat the Dodgers. And we thought this team was going to be together for a long time. And now poor Hyam Bloom comes in. He's under strict orders to, to uh, uh, run things a certain way. I mean, I'm not in agreement that you should give Sander Bogots at age 30 an 11-year contract worth $280 million. But, you know, if you're – you don't – you act. You don't react. And I think that that's the problem with the Red Sox. They're reacting to everything. And once these guys get to free agency with Scott Boris as their agent, they're gone. They're yeah. going to go to the highest bidder. Yeah. No, it's, it's just hard. I don't know. I, I'm sure, you know, people in this city, they love their baseball. They're going to go to the ballpark. It's not like people are going to yeah. boycott games in the summer, but man, ugh, rough. Well, I mean, if you, if you grew up here and you've been a hard uh, uh, a Sox fan your whole life and, you know, every winter uh, in free agency, they'd, they'd make a splash, they'd get a big, big name player. And now, you know, they get Justin Turner. Yeah. Okay. 
you know, it doesn't doesn't excite you the way like Manny Ramirez did, or uh, even when even when they signed Jose Canseco, that was yeah. a big deal. Yeah. You know? But now they, you know, think about Christian Vasquez, the catcher. He's gone. I mean, who's who's around now? I mean, I, I don't know. And you're right. People are going to go to the game. They don't care if they're playing the Bad News Bears. It's an experience going to Fenway Park yeah. for probably 80 percent of the fans that are there. But for the other 20 percent hardcore, it's it, it's disappointing. It's just Boston, Boston fans appreciate guys who did it the right way. And all those yeah. guys, who, all those guys who we just mentioned did it the right way. Boots yeah. and Sander. And yeah. So, but anyway, we'll see if they can turn it around for opening day. Mike Lynch. Uh, it is good to great to talk to you, man. I know it's not been the easiest year. The new year is here. Uh, yeah. a, a better new year ahead. Right. <laughs> Look at me in 23. <laughs> let's, let's plan on that. Let's plan on get you back into the Thanksgiving show. Look, uh, that, that sounds like a good plan to me, man. It's not, it wasn't Thanksgiving here without you in Newburyport. I know that. I will say hi to all my, all my friends up there. They're, they're great people up there. And I had, I have a long history of playing against them in high school, a water boy when I was a kid, my dad was coaching. So, uh, Hi to all the people in Clifferland. Thank you very much. You're loved in this neck of the woods, and uh, including my old uh, and your dad. So used to do the. Uh, he was the athletic director at Danvers High. Yeah, Danvers High, that's right. Yep. yep. Connections all over the place. That's right. Sure. <laughs> well, Mike Lynch, it's great to see you. I uh, continue to come back, man. We'll uh, we'll be following you, and we'll talk again soon. All right. Thanks, Drew. Thanks anytime at all. I love coming on the show. All right. Happy New Year to you. Bye, bye, everybody. 